Good morning, everyone. My name is Debbie Kashamani from Bernina of America, and I am here to tell you how to sew perfect with your B880 Plus, or it could be your 830, or it could be your regular 880. Any of those are fine. But before we get started, let's um, do a little bit of the housekeeping things. So the first one is, if you have questions for me, type those questions into the question box and we will have a question session at the end. I will try to get to as many as I can, um, but they will send me the questions at the end. So um, in the next um, month or so, I will try to get to your question. Um, this webinar is being recorded and will be available to watch on Bernine.com and YouTube next week. If you are viewing this on an Apple product, a iPhone or a iPad, things like that. Um, if you can't see your screen, um, swipe left or right at the bottom so that you can see the screen. And then if you need to get the handouts, and yes, there is a handout for today. It's just my PowerPoint slides turned into a handout for you. Uh, you go to the three dots at the bottom and it will show you more choices where you can choose the handout um, selection to download the PDF. Um, if you experience any audio or visual issues once we get into this, the easiest way to solve that is to uh, leave the webinar completely, close your internet browser, relaunch your browser, and come back into the webinar. And then when we do get to the end and we do go through the questions, um, you know, we'll try to keep those as um, concise as I can. And then the recorded webinar will be on Bernina.com under Learn and Create, Classes, Webinars, and Events, Choose Webinars, and then Recorded Webinars. Okay, are you ready to sew perfect with your 880? Well, some of you uh, know who I am and you know how long I've been using an 8 series machine. And I, I absolutely love this machine. It, it does behave a little differently than other machines. And, Today, um, the session this morning and uh, this afternoon, we're going to talk about why that is the way it is and how you can use your machine in a way that will make it um, easier for you. So uh, we do have two sessions today. Um, and yes, this applies to all of the 8 Series machines. And I didn't write the 820 on there because um, that one hasn't been around for a bit. but it also applies to that machine as well. Today, we're gonna to talk about, in the morning, we're gonna talk about invisible threads and metallic threads. So last year, I did four webinars over a week uh, for all of you, and I got uh, so many questions. So I kind of filtered those down into just the things that um, were the most common questions that you all asked me to speak about. And these two kinds of threads are was the answer. Um, one of the answers. So uh, that we're going to handle today and uh, take notes and um, do what I tell you to do because it'll work. Uh, at the end, I also have a section I call rapid fire Q&A. That just means I had a whole bunch of questions that were like quick answers that were just, you know, yes, no questions or things that, you know, didn't need a whole lot of explanation. So I just put the answers on the screen. So that's coming up for you as well. So we're gonna divide these um, into parts. So we're gonna talk about invisible threads first. We're gonna talk about the properties of invisible threads, what affects your stitch quality, tips to sew with invisible threads, and then set up and testing results. So what I did was I took a couple, two different kinds of invisible threads and all different kind of setup options to find the one that I thought worked best on my 880. So what I want you to understand is that when you decide to use invisible threads, you need to um, you need to test so to see how that thread works on your machine. And so this is the process. So there are two types of invisible threads. One is called a filament polyester. It's also called monofilament polyester, okay? These threads have a high heat tolerance. You can iron them, 
You can throw them in the dryer on a medium heat. They don't melt. They, they stay pretty well. They do not discolor and they have a softer feel to them. The other type is called nylon uh, polyester, I mean nylon thread. It's also called polyamide. And I want you to realize that that is not the same as polyester. Polyamide is nylon. So if you read the top of your spool and it says polyamide, you think it's polyester, you're not correct. Polyester is different, right? Nylon threads have a very low heat tolerance. That low heat tolerance means that if you put an iron to it, it's gonna melt. And, and you just need to know that it, it also discolors or turns yellow over time, and it does get brittle as well. So these are just properties of threads. I'm not saying one's better than the other. I'm just saying you need to understand what each of them offers to you. So why do we bother? Why do we care about invisible threads? Well, we do quilting with it. We do binding. We do machine applique, stitch in the ditch quilting. Some people do couching with it. It also is nice to use anytime you want the texture to be the focus and not the color of the thread. Specifically though, use nylon for projects where thread melting may be the desired effect, or that maybe this is something you would never press or wash or put in the dryer, and then that's fine. So then we need to talk about which spool pin do we use? So generally speaking, if you have crisscross wound thread like you see on the smaller spool in the photo, that would go um, on a horizontal spool pin, sideways, horizontal, so that the thread pulls off the top of the spool because it, it uh, does less twisting and acts and behaves better. If you have a straight wound, um, it would go vertical. These straight wound threads, like the larger spool you see in the picture, are also called flat wound or they're also called a radial thread. Now, to be fair, the term radial thread is not common here in America, but if you look in your manual, oops, let me go back a page. If you look in your manual, there is a, a, a place where it talks about which spool pin to use. And I think in one of the slides, I have the actual page number in here. Um, they use the term radial thread, and I want you to understand that means flat wound, okay? Um, these are generally how you would, where you would put them on your machine. That doesn't mean you can't try it a different way if your thread today is not behaving the way you expect. So not written in stone. So what affects the stitch quality when you use invisible threads? So there are two, and this gets a little bit technical, so go with me here. There are, um, on your spool um, holder on your 880, there are two different types of those little spongies that you see, and I have another picture coming up, so wait for it. Where you put your spool matters a lot, okay? So the picture you see on the left is just a foam. The one you see on the right where you see the red arrow pointing at um, a center circle, there is a, there is a, um, plastic disc on the bottom of that sponge. And that allows the spool to spin rather than the thread to pull off. So here's what I mean. This, um, this allows for consistent thread release from the spool. So let me talk about thread release real quick. Thread release means that whenever you put the spool on your spool pen, no matter what machine you're using or what um, where you're putting it, how that thread pulls off of the spool itself actually matters. If you pull the thread and it feels like it's dragging or it's getting caught along the way, like some spools have like a little slit in the top or the bottom that a thread could get caught in. So thread release, um, if it's not smooth, it causes resistance and increases your top tension just because it's dragging as it's coming off the spool. So when you put your spools on your 880, I want you to make sure 
that you just give it a little tug and make sure the thread release is nice and smooth. Oh, there it is. On pages 28 and 29 in the manual, the 880 manual, it tells you, explains the this um, radial thread guide is what they call it on the bottom of that one foam disc. So I decided to just take some pictures, right? So here's my 880 on the left-hand side. And that's those are our three spool pins that we have. The one on the far right is, of course, the um, um, where you would wind a bobbin. This one has the radial thread guide in it. You see it right down here at the bottom, right? This one does not have that. So if you put a spool on the front of the um, thread guide, the first spool pin in the front, the spool will not spin because the sponge holds it stationary. If you put the spool on the rear one, it has the plastic on the bottom, and then the spool itself, along with the foam disc, will spin. Why is that important? Look on the right-hand side, you'll see the, the radial thread guide here. When that sits on the bottom, it spins the whole spool, and it should. Okay, so depending on what kind of thread you're using determines which place you put your spool. So if you put it on the front side and your thread is not behaving well, move it to the back side. There's one more thing I want you to notice. In your, on your um, little divider here between your um, spools that you use to thread the machine and the spool pin that you use to wind a bobbin, there's a, a horizontal thread guide and it. You can't really see it here very well, but this is where you would, if you put your spool here, you would thread your thread behind the front one and through the, the uh, horizontal thread guide. And I have some more pictures of that because how you thread the machine on an eight series machine matters more than you can imagine. And so this is why I'm getting kind of detailed about this. So here we are with um, a picture of thread stand, and this is a metallic thread. It's not invisible, but it works the same way. If I had invisible thread, the invisible threads that I had were flat wound threads. And so I put them on the rear spool pin here, and you thread that, pull that thread, and it goes behind the front one through the through the uh, horizontal thread guide. And then when you thread up to the next thread guide, it would go through this center one, not the, not the one right above the spool, like you would normally think you would. When you are using the horizontal thread guide, the thread should go to the middle thread guide before you thread the machine normally. Okay, got it? I know, details, details, right? But this is what makes it so much easier and much smoother. So I uh, just have some arrows pointing at where, where things are. So this is your front spool pin, thread goes behind it. And this is the horizontal thread guide. And then it goes through this next thread guide. Okay, so thread release is important. So I know I'm reviewing, but this is important stuff, right? So thread release and resistance. If your release is not, the release off the thread, off the thread spool is not smooth, it's gonna cause resistance and then it's gonna cause tension issues. So that's one thing that will affect your stitch quality when using invisible threads. Threading through the thread guide, the horizontal thread guide, threading through the middle eyelet of the telescopic rod. Adjusting your top tension also will affect invisible threads, and we'll, we'll get to some of that in a bit. And then your bobbin thread type and tension also affects how you would use your invisible thread. So here are a few additional tips. So we went through where to put the spool, and how to thread over on the uh, threader mechanism. The rest of the machine you thread normally when you're using invisible threads, except there is a small hook right here on the back 
of the presenter. So this is the, um, took this picture from the back side of the machine. This is the presenter and you can see your invisible thread here. You want to go underneath this little hook and then up and cut the thread. And the reason is because invisible threads are very slippery. They don't behave nicely. They're kind of unruly would be a nice word. Uh, so you need to hook it underneath that hook. For regular threads, we usually don't even think about that. But for invisible thread, it will help hold the thread into the presenter so that whenever you go to thread the needle, it holds onto it long enough. The other thing you want to do is you want to thread. Um, I, I preferred, actually it worked better for me, that I used the hand threading. So whenever you thread your 880 and this screen comes up, you can see at the bottom left corner a picture of a hand threading the needle. And when you use, you know, invisible threads, um, when you use uh, twin needles or swing needles or specialty things like that, or certain presser feet that you don't want the threader mechanism to swing around and hit your um, presser foot or your needle, um, or you're using really tiny eye needles, that's another reason, you can select your hand threader button here and the mechanism will thread um, through your top tension correctly but then the threader the presenter will not swing over and you'll have to hand thread so i found that i got a better result when i did my testing for this for invisible threads that hand threading was my easier way of doing it so let's see what else um, additional tips for precision sewing with invisible threads. So what I found was I pulled my bobbin thread to the top. That's not a standard thing that I normally do when I start to sew, but it's it. the thread behaved better if I pulled the bobbin thread to the top first and pulled kind of a longer tail. And then I just kind of hung on to that tail when I started my first stitch, okay? because the thread is slippery it can get away from you so if you hold on to those threads when you do just the first make sure you do one full stitch then you can let go um, so here's the other thing and this is something i learned just over the years of working with an eight series machine um, you know that thread break error message that we all get whenever we start to sew and if it just you know it can be a little annoying i get it so and it, i took a picture of what it looks like and sometimes there's a big question mark that comes up on the screen as well because the machine thinks you have um there's a thread break okay so um tomorrow uh, this afternoon i'm gonna talk about this in a more technical way to explain to you why this happens and how it happens but for now i'm just going to tell you this do not jackrabbit start sewing on an eight series machine it's just it will prevent this thread break error from happening to you so you know hold on to your thread or take one stitch and just pause for a sec and then continue to sew and you won't get this thread break error so if you do get this thread break error um, i usually touch the orange x button at the bottom and continue to sew if it happens a second time then yeah I probably unthreaded the needle or my thread broke or something right but a lot of times it's because of how the machine works so i want you to come back this afternoon for the second session because i'm going to show you pictures of the inside graphics so you can understand how that actually happens because i know you're all really smart and if i just show you why you can't do what you can't jackrabbit start because you'll get this thread break error then i know you'll be happier about sewing with your eight series machine so solutions are coming for you um, when i use the invisible thread um, back stitching or some kind of securing stitch that you prefer should you should use one of those <clears throat> and the reason i say that is because that thread is kind of unruly as we've talked about and slippery and yes it will get away from you and it will undo your first stitch so lock that stitch in 
also sow at a slower speed with invisible threats. Um, I know somebody's going to ask, did you put um, invisible thread in the bobbin? And the answer is no, I did not, because I don't think you need to. So we'll get to that in a minute. So I did some testing. We're going to talk about bobbin threads here too. Um, what needle you choose really matters. Okay, in any in any sewing, the needle you choose matters, and you should always pay attention to, you know, why you want to use a different needle. So, are you using nylon or are you using polyester? You should. It doesn't matter which one of those you use, but you should use a lightweight bobbin thread when you use invisible thread, meaning um, 50 weight or higher. Okay. There are various bobbin tension settings you can use, and you can also use top tension settings to make your stitch look the way you want. So testing, testing, right? That's how you know you need it to be the way you want. So let's dive in a little deeper on what needles to use, okay? So I read and did a bunch of research, um, and depending on who you read, where you read it, some say use a real teeny needle like a 7010, and some say use an, a 90-14. So the goal for you is to test with the thread that you have and whatever works for you is fine, okay? So here's what I learned. If I used a 70-10 and I used a 70-10, I used 80-12s um, and I used 90-14s. So I used, I used different threads but used different needles to test all different things. Um, the 7010 has a small eye and a small shaft, and it could cause the thread to drag, stretch, or break, depending on which kind of invisible thread you're using. On the other hand, it may be just right. So test and see what works for you. Hand thread the needle because the eye of this 7010 is too small for a needle threader. Ask me how I know. Yeah, so sometimes you just like forget yourself a little bit and you use the needle threader on the head of the machine, even though you just put in a size 7010. Um, yeah, you can, cause, um, you can cause your needle threader to jam or to break. And so anytime you use a size 70 or smaller needle, make sure that you use the hand threader choice. Okay, <clears throat> more stuff about uh, needles. Uh, the other needles I tested were 8012s and 9014s. Um, these do leave a little bit larger hole in the fabric, but it does allow the thread to move easier along the needle shaft. It may be too big though for a desired stitch. So testing is definitely required. Type of needle matters. So are you using a top stitch needle? Or are you using a microtex? Um, depends on what your fabric is. Okay, those are both sharps. Okay, so um, one is just a larger type of needle. I have some pictures coming up here to show you. Um, the top stitch has a larger eye, um, but you have to think about that the thread may shift vertically leading to poor stitch quality. So let me show you what I mean. So I, I, um, I got these pictures, so giving credit where credit is due, from superiorthreads.com. They had some great photos on what a, um, what a needle eye looks like compared to other needle eyes. And um, it's um, the document I saw there was called the Top Stitch Needle Guide. Um, so if you look at the uh, picture on the left-hand side, you'll see um, a Microtech Sharp size 60, which is really small. And then you compare it to those other um, 7010, 8012s, 9014s, 116s. All those are top stitch needles. And you can see how the eye of the needle size changes pretty, pretty heftily. Okay, so depending on what you're doing, you have to use the right size needle for the thread you are using because the thread goes through that eye and if the eye is too small 
for the thread you're using, your thread is going to rip and it's going to cause break and you're not gonna like that, okay? Don't blame your machine. Sometimes it's just the needle, right? So the picture on the right is um, not a graphic, more the actual needle. The difference between a universal needle on the top and a top stitch needle on the bottom. I also got this picture from superiorthreads.com so that you can see the difference. So if you see the, the top stitch needle on the bottom that has that larger eye, and of course you would turn this vertically, right, in your machine. So if your thread, if you're getting loops and weird looking stitches, if if you're using a top stitch needle, maybe that thread is riding up and down in that eye of the needle and the needle may be not the right type for what your technique is. So always when you look at your stitching be discerning and decide what it is that looks um, the way you want it to look and if you're seeing things that don't look quite right then start with changing the needle because maybe it's the type of needle or the size of needle that is causing the issue um, and yes, we'll talk about some twin needle information in this afternoon's session. Just wanted to put a little note there. I had a question about that. Um, so what kind of bobbin thread do you use when you are working with invisible threads? You can use a 50 weight or higher. I tested with a 60 weight and an 80 weight, two different brands. Uh, they were both polyester. Yes, testing is required because you don't know what's going to work until you've tested based upon what your work what your technique is today um, so find your favorite brand and um, uh, but you have to do some testing to know the answer so now i'm going to go through what i how i tested so on test number one i use nylon invisible thread and 80 weight bobbin thread I chose stitch number 1331 in the quilting stitch menu to do my testing for everything today. Um, it's often used for machine applique. And the reason I picked that is because it is a stitch. Um, I use default top thread tension and default bobbin tension. And the stitch looks like this. And the reason I chose it is because it had that left and right motion. That way I could see if my bobbin thread was um, pulling to the top or whatever. And so on my first test, Here's what it looked like. And you can see in the red circle that the bobbin thread was like a light gray, was pulling to the top and the invisible thread, um, uh, it's hard to see in the picture, I know, but the bobbin thread was pulling to the top when I set it up with this setup, right? So I needed to make a change. So I tried the same invisible thread, nylon, with 60 weight bobbin thread. Same stitch, I used a top stitch 90 needle, default top thread tension, I added bobbin tension. Now, you know, on an eight series machine, we can add bobbin tension by just threading the bobbin for embroidery. And I know that's the words we use, thread for embroidery, but it actually just adds a little extra tension to pull the top thread down. And you can use that threading type anytime. It doesn't have to be just for embroidery. It can be for any time you see bobbin thread pulling to the top. So there's my picture. And now my bobbin thread is no longer pulling to the top. All I see is my, well, you can't see because it's invisible thread, right? I did uh, take a picture of the back side after I was done, so you can see that there is a little bit of a tug, um, just a slight tug to the back side, and that's because I used the um, bobbin tension. And then I just added this picture the other day, so you can see how that looks whenever you thread the extra on the bobbin. So for those of you who didn't see my webinars from last summer, they happened in June, I did, um, four webinars. The first two were strictly how to thread this machine. That's it. The first one was how to thread the top. The second one was how to thread the bobbin. And so we're not going to go through that today again, but feel free to go back and watch those because that will teach you how you need to thread your machine so that it will make you happy. Trust me, do it my way. 
that's the only way to do it. I'm just telling you, do it my way. <laughs> okay. My next test for invisible thread was the uh, monofilament or uh, filament polyester thread. My first test was with 80 weight bobbin thread. And I used the same stitch. This time I used a Microtex 80 12 needle default top tension, added the bobbin tension for embroidery. And um, this is how my stitch turned out. And that, that was okay. It, it wasn't perfect. I, I still, I feel like there's some like um, a little bit of loose loopy or something. This is the top. This is not the bobbin, the bottom side. This is the top side. Okay. And I still feel like there's a little bit of pull here. So I um, tested again. And this time I used the 60 weight bobbin thread, same stitch. I used a smaller needle, default top tension. I added bobbin tension for embroidery. And I put the spool on the rear spool pin with, through the thread guide. This time, I thought this was perfect. So to me, I, I would test like this and decide what I like. It's all about me. And so it's all about you. So test, set it up the way you want, and, um, and then you'll be happy with what you decide. All right. So. The next thing is, um, oh, I just took a picture of what a bad stitch looks like <laughs> because, you know, when you test, you do get some bad looking things. It, it's not, it, generally speaking, and, and this is just across the board, um, it's usually not your machine. The machines are made to be um, pretty standard and pretty perfect. It's how we use the machine that causes issues. And so, I want you to realize this is not good, right? You see loops, you see pulling from the, this is the front side of the stitching. So you see the bobbin thread pulling to the top. You see um, like loopy stuff at the bottom. Um, yeah, so that was not a good test. So try again. Uh, there is a, um, we also blog post. It's not from this year, I don't think, but it's how to thread a, um, 880 plus with monofilament thread. Just wanted to kind of send you to the We Also uh, blog. Okay, so next up are metallic threads. So generally, um, we're going to talk about what are the properties of threads, the stitch quality, and I have invisible threads, so, but we're, we're switching to metallics. So, um, Metallic threads generally have a nylon or polyester core wrapped with a metallic foil. So if you think about taking your, you know, uh, um, something and wrapping it with a metallic foil, that leaves you with a bit of a, um, you know, a thread that's very uh, brittle, I guess you would say. Some of the threads when they are in production, have multiple steps and layers within the thread production process. They heat and they cool and they wrap and they do it again. So different thread brands make their metallic threads in different processes. Hence, they are not all the same. You think they are, but they are not. Um, so the quality of the thread really does matter. So we use metallic threads for embellishment and quilting and embroidery and decorative stitches. And really it's all about the fun for me. This is something I do a lot. Um, it adds dimension and bling and fun. So what affects your stitch quality here? Your top thread tension, you need to adjust depending on what is your thread. And you only know this if you test, right? So you're, um, usually we use a top stitch needle or a metallic um, 9014, um, top stitch needle 9014 as well. Um, you can also use an SUK or a ballpoint needle. Uh, and that is uh, useful when you are doing something that it you're going into the same holes over and over. And it kind of, um, if a sharp needle like a top stitch or a metallic is cutting through your last stitch, then it could cause your thread to break. So an SUK needle or a ballpoint needle 
doesn't break the threads or cut through the threads, it pushes around it. And so it will be less likely to cut through. And so maybe that could be an option as well. Uh, we talked about thread quality already. So yes, your needles matter. So standard for embroidery, there uh, is a 7511 embroidery needle, right? And um, you will see that, um, again, the photo is from Superior Threads. This eye of this size needle is one millimeter long. Now, if you know what a millimeter is, it's an awfully small space. And that's okay for embroidery threads. I don't know that it's okay for metallic threads though, okay? It would increase the friction and increase heat, and both of those things cause metallic threads to break. So, if I'm using a 9014 um, top stitch needle that you see in this picture, you can see the eye of the needle is, a, is two millimeters long. You, you have less thread resistance, which we know can cause problems. Um, it has a wider groove in the needle because it's a, a, a wider needle. And the thread passes through the eye of the needle on an 880, 80 to 100 times per inch of sewing. Okay, let me say that again. If I'm sewing a straight stitch, you're sewing a straight stitch on an 880, the thread goes like this through the eye of the needle, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, 80 to 100 times per one inch of sewing. You know, that's kind of a lot of friction on a metallic thread. And so you have to do everything possible to help your machine not break that thread. So smaller eye needles are not your friend here. So a few tips for success. Um, flat wound spools of metallic should wind off the side of the spool. So use the same process as invisible thread. Now, to, to be fair, if you have a spool of thread that is acting up and unruly, feel free to put a crisscross wound thread on the radial thread guide spool pin, put it through the horizontal thread guide and thread it as if it's a flat wound. Because test it and if it works, then it will make your life easier. Okay, so it's okay if you try it either way. Generally speaking, larger cones though would uh, are cross wound and would pull off the top of the spool. But if you look at how threads metallic threads pull off a spool. They really do kind of, as soon as they come off the spool, it's like they don't like being off the spool because they immediately like twist and and um, roll up on each on itself and they become unruly. So sometimes using that radial thread guide and the horizontal um, um, spool, uh, thread guide will help control that. Also, if you are using, um, if you, if you are using a larger cone or something that you want to pull off the top of the spool, you can also use a thread net to control the thread release that way. Use a lint-free polyester thread in the bobbin when you use a metallic thread. And so slower, and we all know that rule, right? When we're using metallic threads. So now we're gonna go through the setup, the needles, the tension, and the stitch selection. So on this one, um, when I tested, the first one I tested was a Yen Met metallic thread. I threaded this on the rear spool pin through the horizontal thread guide, and I used a top stitch 90, 14 needle. I used a, um, I started with the default top tension of 2.75, and then as I went through my stitching of my flower that you see there, I kept decreasing the top tension until the thread didn't break. And it didn't break. And that was kind of nice. It was really nice and smooth. So I, um, even when I was at a top tension of 2.75, I, I didn't really have a whole lot of thread break issues, but I did see, if you look at this picture, and you pro it's hard to see, the uh, bobbin thread was pulling to the top a little bit around these edges here at the very, if you look real close, you can see it. I don't, I don't like that. And so I decreased my top tension until I no longer saw that bobbin thread pulling to the top edge, okay? 
So this one worked pretty well. Now, to be fair, not all threads from the same thread line behave the same way. Okay, so it's important for you to understand, I might use this spool of RFL thread and this spool of RFL thread, yet they don't behave the same way. And that's normal because, you know, each spool is made individually and you don't know what happens in the process. So know that just because it's the same brand doesn't mean it can't give you um, issues that you might have to try other things. So then I took a picture of the back of this so that you could see how the back of the of, of it looked and it, um, it, it all stitched out pretty nicely through here. So I, I was pretty happy with this particular test. So the next one I tested was a superior metallic. And I threaded this on the rear spool pin through the horizontal thread guide and top stitch 9014. Um, I did not get thread breakage when my top tension was between 1.0 and 1.5. So when I turned it up to 1.75, I began to get thread breaks. So this is how this is how you have to test with your own um, thread, whatever you're using. So on this one, I had a top tension picture here of top tension 2.75, and I could see my bobbin thread here pulling to the top. And then this one at 1.75, um, the I couldn't see my thread anymore pulling from the top, but I was still getting thread breaks. So when I moved my thread uh, tension down to um, 1.0 to 1.5, then I didn't get any more thread breaks, okay? So it's all about the testing. Now, I will tell you on different brands of metallic thread, different brands will give you the directions for how to use their threads, you know, how to set your tension, how to do this, how to do that. I want you to understand an 880 is not the same as any other machine on the market. And they are speaking to the masses when they write those directions. So I want you to do your own thing. And I want you to test these different ways to determine what works best for you, because that's what's important. So when I look at the back of this one, this one worked out pretty good, okay. Um, and then this one, I, I want you to consider, I tried another uh, brand and it seemed, it didn't matter if I had the tension up, um, it broke. And if I turned down the tension, then the, the um, this is the back picture of the back side. Okay, so you always gotta turn it over and look at the back, right? Because the front looked pretty. And the back looked like the, the top thread was all pulling way to the bottom side. And it was like all kind of thick and not what you would want it to look like. So depending on what thread you're, you're using determines how you set things up. Choice of thread, type of needle, your top tension, and understand your 880 has a different top tension thread mechanism than other Bernina machines and other brands, meaning they don't behave the same way. So if somebody says they have a B790 or a 590 and they're using their machine and this is how they set it up, use that method, it might not work on an 880 that way because the top tension, the mechanism, the mechanical part of that itself is not the same on an eight series machine as it is on other Bernina machines and other brands. And so you have a very unique machine that works fabulous, but you have to test and see what will work best for you, okay? So before I get into my rapid fire q and I do wanna just kind of, um, kind of review back and just, say what I find to be um, one of the best things with an eight series machine. If you understand how it works, it sews beautifully. And so I want you to, when you sew, I don't want you to get that thread break error. And we'll talk more about that this afternoon. So don't jackrabbit start your machine, okay? kind of give it the time to start to sew, right? And that's that's really important. And I'm gonna give you the down and dirty on that 
this afternoon. So you'll learn about that and that, that will make more sense to you. So now to our rapid fire Q&A. Here are the answers to some of the questions I got last year. Dark threads break more often due to the saturation of color. Did you know that? Like if I had a cotton thread that was black and a cotton thread that was white, the black thread would tend to break more just because the saturation of color makes a thread more brittle, more um, easy, easy to break. It's, yeah, you wouldn't think that color would matter, but it really does. And it's not just black. It's like dark green, navy, um, like those saturated kind of colors. If you use invisible thread in the bobbin, which I did not because I think it's really not necessary, but you know, if you find a technique that you want to use invisible thread in the bobbin on an eight series machine, I want you to wind that bobbin super slow to prevent it from stretching because when you sew with it, it will recoil and then it will for things it won't so it will not so well all right so just keep that in mind so um, wind it very slowly um, you can use up to a 12 weight thread on the top on any bernina with a size 116 needle okay so 12 weight you should always swing out the threading mechanism when you're sewing. So that's the um, threader. So you close the threader to wind a bobbin, you open it till it clicks to thread the machine and to sew with the machine. Just leave it swung out. You can sew with the embroidery module attached. It does not hurt a thing. I do it all the time. The only time I take my module off, I guess, is when I'm, my project is bigger, and so I take the module off because the embroidery arm gets in my way. Other than that, it just doesn't matter. Um, you can attach and detach the embroidery module when the machine is on. It doesn't matter, it's plug and play. Okay, so you can take it off, put it on while the machine is turned on. You can also embroider with the foot control. Like if you needed to start off really slowly, and um, you can embroider with your foot control. You do not have to unplug the foot control to do embroidery. A few more questions that I answered. Um, <clears throat> you should not thread the bobbin for extra tension all the time. You know that thread for embroidery mindset. You should not do that all the time. I had someone ask me if, if um, should we do that just all the time? No, you should do that you should decide that depending on you know what you tested and what your stitch looks like. If you see bobbin thread pulling to the top, then certainly you can add that extra tension to drop that thread back down. But it's all a matter of your thread, needle, fabric, and technique you're using, so you don't have to do it all the time. The cutwork stitch plate has a slightly larger hole than the regular straight stitch plate. You can use either one, except if you're using the cutwork tool then you need to use the cut work plate. When using a dual feed presser foot, you should always pull down the dual feed foot or you are sewing with part of your foot missing and then your fabric may tunnel or fold or pinch. So yes, always pull down the Bernina dual feed whenever you are sewing with a D foot. You can thread the machine with a presser foot on or off, it doesn't matter. Unless you are using a larger presser foot that would interfere with the threader mechanism. So this is another one of those ask me how I know things. So there are certain presser feet that when you thread the machine, you know your presenter drops down, you put the thread in it and it swings over. If you have a large presser foot on the machine, it could crash, your threader mechanism could crash into the foot. Some of those are the number 55 leather roller foot, yeah, I broke something doing that once. Um, the ruffler, um, the walking foot's pretty big. Um, there, there are a few, um, the binder attachment probably. There are a few others. If you're unsure, then touch the threader thread by hand button, you know, 
and that will work. Also, if you're using um, twin needles and wing needles and things, things like that that are unusual, um, you can tell the machine you're using those types of needles and it, will it won't swing over or you know, you can tell the machine on the fly to do that. Okay, well, that's all I have for you this morning. Um, our session number two is today at 3 p.m. Central Time. And this afternoon, we're gonna talk, um, the first majority of it is going to be answering technical questions that I got last year, um, trying to help you understand those. And then um, in the end, we're just gonna, show, I'm gonna just uh, pull out my simulator and show you some fun things that maybe you'd like to try. Uh, so, um, Randy, do we have any questions? Uh, yeah, actually, we have a couple of questions right now. Um, the first one is, uh, it's kind of long, so I'm having issues stitching fonts smaller than one half inch and not forms on the back side. I've tried various needles using 60 weight thread, even tried the 100 weight thread, same issue. I was told that a loose thread may be in the thread path and to run non-glossy floss, floss through the path. I haven't done that. I didn't know it was truly an option for the 880 plus. Um, yeah, I, I think that's more um, an other other models um, because some people will run a floss through the top tension discs, which you cannot access on an eight series machine. So that it isn't really an option. And and this. Um, and the customer didn't say whether this was in embroidery or if it was in sewing, I don't think. So um, that um, that is a, a half an inch. That's really very small. I would say if, if you were doing it in embroidery, you probably have uh, more success. And in the embroidery software nine, version nine, or even version six, seven, eight, um, we do have some fonts that are intended for that very tiny um, size. And that would probably your be, be your best solution rather than trying to do it on the sewing side, which may not be conducive to, to that. But on the embroidery side, those particular fonts are uh, like the micro fonts are available in the software. And I think that would probably be your best bet. Next question. Uh, next question is, uh, what is the default upper tension set for the 880? Every time I, every time it's serviced, it's changed. So now it's not balanced. Okay, so the default top tension is a per stitch tension. Every stitch is created in its with its own top tension. So those are preset at the factory. When they, um, when they digitize those stitches, they preset the tension for that particular stitch. So depending on what stitch you're using, you're gonna see a different top tension. And you can always make an adjustment to, um, to fit you know, whatever thread and bobbin thread you may be, you may be using. But there, isn't, um, there is an internal um, way to adjust your top tension and, and again, that's set default at the factory, but you, you, the consumer, you can uh, go into your settings, um, into uh, the machine option, I believe, and then you'll see the top tension adjustment that you can adjust the top tension, which by the way, will affect top tension on everything in your entire machine, okay? If you think that everything on your machine is set at the wrong tension, then that is um, that needs to be handled by technical at your local store. And if they are unsure how to make that adjustment, they can reach out to the Bernina technicians in Chicago to help them um, decipher what's going on with that. But mostly it's from our consumer point of view, you know, you adjust the top tension based upon a stitch, the one you're using today, so. Okay, next question we have is, uh, can a heavier thread be used in the 880, such as the Tex 60? 
Wait, say that again. Can a heavier thread be used in the 880, such as a TEX 60, TEX 60? TEX 60. Can it be used? I, you know, um, to be fair, that the word TEX is a different measurement than, um, than our standard weight of thread. And so I'm not sure, I, I am not well versed enough in that um, weight measurement to answer that question. So um, Randy, just make sure that question lands in my Excel spreadsheet when you sure. send, and I'll have to do a little research to answer that one to be, to be honest with you. So let's, okay. let's, hold, on, let's hold on that one. Sure. Uh, another question is, I have a new SDT embroidery module. Is there mm -hmm. a way to register this under on Bernina to protect the warranty? Hmm. Um, probably yes. On uh, in the regular registration on Bernina.com, you can you can register it there. Um, usually, when you buy a machine, you both pieces, both the embroidery module and the machine, are entered in together. So uh, you can double check with your local dealer, but I'm pretty sure you would just go to Bernina.com registration and go ahead okay. and register it there. Uh, another question is, can you please give us the brand thread names you have been successful with? Well, the, um, the, on the metallic, it was Yenmet and it was Superior. Um, I tested uh, five or six different brands. Those two rose to the top. Um, the other ones worked okay. Just those two kind of rose to the top for me as far as the results that I got. Uh, doesn't mean the other brands aren't fine. They are. They're just, um, you know, you got to decide which ones work best for you. So will those work best on your machine? You'll have to test and find out. The uh, invisible threads I had, um, one was a, uh, one was, I think, a, the superior, I think I had a superior um, monopoly was the um, monofilament type. The nylon one, I think, might have been a wonder fill, but don't quote me. But, you know, there are a variety of different brands of those. Those are just the ones I happen to have in my stash, you know. Okay, um, next question. Uh, the flower that you showed in your slides, was that done free motion or embroidery? Oh, no, that, that uh, when I was, the flower was embroidered. It was, it's one of the um, default um, built-in designs on the 880 in one of the, uh, I think it's like in folder two probably, but yeah, that's, that's just the one I picked to, to test with, but yeah, that was embroidered. Okay, we have uh, two minutes. I'll try to pick one more. <laughs> pick one more. Okay. How do you tell the difference between the cutwork plate plate versus others? Okay, the cutwork plate and the straight stitch plate do look very similar, but I believe the cutwork plate has a different color sticker on the, the plate itself. And you'll be able to see that. Um, hold on, maybe I can maybe I can show it. Hold on, I'll get out my simulator. Okay. All right, um, so if I go to my um, stitch plate selection, this is a five and a half millimeter, and that has a yellowy, no, a orangey kind of sticker. This one is a zero stitch plate. That's your regular straight stitch plate, and that has a red, and then there's a punch work one that has yellow, and then this one is a cut work, and it's kind of like a, um, it's different than the straight stitch one, which has a red sticker, and the cut work one has a little bit of an orangier look to it. So that's how you know which one you're using. Okay. Uh, uh, well, I'll just send you all the other questions that were unanswered. Um, it's 11 o'clock, okay. so. Okay. Thank you everybody for attending. I, I hope this will help you. So easier, better, 
and have more fun with the invisible and the metallic threads. And I'll see you this afternoon because we're going to talk tech. See you later.